It's beautiful springtime in Oklahoma again, and in the spring we oftentimes see several turf afflictions. We might be seeing spring dead spot, fairy ring, or uh, winter kill, but what we want to focus on in this short segment is fairy ring. Now, fairy ring is a symptom, and in, you'll see in this segment that we have dark green turf and we sometimes have a dead ring or a series of arcs within that ring, and this is caused by a fungus, and it's said to be the fairy ring fungus. And so, no, we're not making things up. That's the actual common name of it. And there's three symptoms exhibited by fairy ring. And right now, we have a type one symptom. And what you see here is you'll see greening of turf, but you'll actually see tan, brown, dead turf. So that's a type one symptom. Type two symptom would be no dead turf visible but the greening effect from the released nutrients. And then a type three symptom would be where you actually see the mushrooms being exhibited, the fruiting bodies of the fungus. I do want to point out that this is not an actual pathogen on the turf but rather the secondary things that happen because of the fungus moving through the soil and digesting organic matter, it releases lots of nutrients and also the sheer amount of fungus present is hydrophobic or water repelling. And it is that water repelling aspect that causes the turf to die from drought stress. And so that's what you see here, this uh, dead ring. Now over months and over years, the fungus will continue to grow outward radially. And so these rings can actually become many yards wide. Some of them viewed from the air, you can see them several hundred feet wide out in the prairie or old cemeteries. Here we see much larger fairy ring symptoms. These fungi that caused this probably originated in the mulch that was used around the base of these sycamore trees. One thing that is very important preventative wise with a new construction site, you want to remove as many of the wood construction debris as possible two by fours, wood pieces, wood scraps, etc., from the soil. Also any tree roots or tree stumps because those are the food that the fairy ring fungi feed upon. So it's very important to take their food source away from them to, to reduce the chance of uh, fairy ring symptoms coming up. What we wanna do first is show you what it might look like when we extract a core that covers both where the injury has occurred and where the turf appears healthy and where the ring is headed to. So we're gonna grab a common sharpshooter spade that's almost in every gardener's uh, wardrobe of tools. And we've pre-cut our slice and we're gonna go perpendicularly across the slice and we're gonna lift out the turf so we can take a look at it underneath. And you'll notice here's the dead area. Actually the fungus is, is advancing outward now from there. So the injury was here. And you notice the soil is very felty and dry. It didn't take water from our recent rains. Soil is nice and moist here and out here. And if you look closely, you can actually see a high concentration of the white mycelia in the soil. But the fungus is actually moving outwards. And so over time, this hydrophobic tendency will spread out this way. So the next step in this process is to choose your favorite tool, whether that's a pitchfork or a spading fork, either are usually available in the garden arsenal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pierce the soil and do some aeration. And in this process, we're gonna get the soil ready for pouring a drench in, which is a soil wetting agent made from dishwashing liquid and water. So now we're going to start the spading process. And what we're wanting to do is make sure that we are going perpendicular to the ring and we're getting about four to six inches inside of the greenmost area and then also four to six inches outside of the green outer area. That way we'll be completely crossing where the area has been damaged but also where the fungus is at this point in time. So what you'll do is you'll just uh, essentially stab in the soil and I will mention personal protective equipment of gloves. This is a very aerobic process. You don't want to injure your hands also. And watch where your feet are. So boots would be handy as well. I just happened to be in a sneaker this morning. And we're going to stab in and we're going to rotate the uh, 
spading fork back and forth, just opening up an area to receive water so that we can wet up the soil. After you've spaded the soil, you want to clean your tools. So clean the soil and debris from the spading forks, uh, pitchforks, those types of things, and then give them a good wash down because it is possible to spread the fungus to other sites. So we finished aerating the uh, ring uh, and we, it's ready now to receive the soil wetting agent. We've already mixed our soap in and we're just gonna gradually pour over this area, trying to wet up fully four to six inches outside of the dead area. So it's an inexpensive way of helping alleviate the hydrophobic nature of the soil and it should facilitate earlier recovery uh, of the ring itself. The fungus that causes the fairy ring symptoms isn't really a pathogen of the grass. It's not attacking the grass. It's the secondary issues that happen like excluding water. And so this feature can happen on any turf grass species or in another portion of our view here, you'll see the effect on white clover that's present in a much larger ring. And as these rings grow outward over several years, it can be many, many yards across these very large rings. I've seen them 50 to 100 feet across in some prairies and naturalized areas. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.